going on guys? What you doing on the floor of the garage? Well, I hope you're in the mood to talk about the Swiss tracks that I recently installed in my garage. I did a full install video, did some tips, did a little bit of logic as to why I picked the Swiss tracks versus polished concrete or some sort of garage coating or epoxy or whatever. Uh, but today, we're going to be focusing on the logic and the thought process as to why this works much better for me than the alternatives. Okay, so keep in mind, when you choose something like epoxy, it's not perfect. Just like when you choose Swiss tracks, it's also not perfect. So I think everyone just assumes that epoxy is the way to go and if you go some other route, you have a lot more cons than pros. And I really don't think that's the case, especially because it depends on who you are and what you're doing in the garage. Um, so there's sacrifice on both sides. We're gonna talk about that. And uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit of insight as to why I chose this. Uh, probably not the best choice for every single person out there, but for me, I think this is literally like the end all be all uh, solution for what I'm doing in the garage. All right, so let's talk about one of the big reasons why I went this route. And that is, if you couldn't tell, my garage is very deep. The reason it's deep is because the owner extended it another two cars. So I have a four car total, and what that means is that the floor is all cut up, concrete looks very different, concrete has settled in certain areas, uh, which means if you were to go the epoxy route, um, you'd have a lot of prep work to do to get it um, level and adhere to the epoxy and all that stuff. So I was not comfortable spending that money and spending that time and figuring out how I could try to make that work. It'd be a little bit of a forceful uh, project. I don't think that would be the right choice for me and for this garage, how big it is. Um, it's like almost 800 square feet. The prep for epoxy like that would be just terrible. And also, there's a lot of areas that are wearing away, uh, chipping away, crumbling away. So I'd have a lot of um, patching and waiting and all that stuff to do as well. So what I'm trying to explain to you guys is the Swiss tracks is nice because I don't have to prep the floor or maintain the floor or really do anything before putting it on besides you know vacuuming or whatever and measuring to make sure it fits. Anyway, so that was one of the big reasons is that the part of the garage has settled and the other part hasn't and one part's um, you know over a decade newer than the other part and uh, it just wasn't, it just didn't feel right and uh, I didn't wanna pay all the money for uh, epoxy. All right, so another reason why I really like the Swiss tracks is how clean it stays. So this is a functional uh, flooring. Not only does it look really cool, uh, but it's very functional. Dirt falls through, and uh, that is why you're able to sort of lay around on the floor. Um, anything I touch is whatever just residual on the top surface. Any di dirt, sand, dust falls through. A lot of guys vacuum it you know, annually or biannually or maybe they do it once a month. You literally just vacuum the top. Um, alternatively, if you wash cars, you have a drain or something, um, the floor will get much dirtier. I know guys, uh, Rick uh, from Rick's Audi Double, uh, Rad Garage, he does, uh, he pops off the flooring in giant sections brings them out to the uh, driveway and pressure washes them and cleans them. So if you wanna do that, you can do that a few times a year. What's nice is uh, if there's one that gets really messed up or one that you wanna replace, uh, when you take it out, you can just put a new one in. It's really easy to do that. Um, so what I really like is the cleanliness. Epoxy is nice, um, but it's not gonna be much different than having the concrete from a cleanly standpoint. You're still gonna have to sweep the garage um, and everything like that. Also, what's kind of cool is leaves and stuff, uh, or especially those little helicopters, we get those uh, in Ohio here, we get a lot of those. They get stuck at the front like first two tiles. So there's literally no helicopters that will get past them because they kind of get jammed right there. And like just randomly when I'm vacuuming my cars, I'll just vacuum that first section and then they're gone. So really nice. Obviously you have to stare at them while they're there, uh, which people may not like, but if you think about it, it's the same as like the concrete. So anyways, uh, that is uh, one of the big benefits is how clean the floor stays. But Brandon, what if I drop a screw on the floor? How am I supposed to pick that up? Well, gosh, Billy, I don't know. Maybe you just grab it. 
Um, I'm being facetious, guys. I know these are really long screws, but one of the questions everyone has, what if you drop a screw, washer bolt, whatever? Um, sometimes it falls through, pop up the tile or whatever. Other times they are big enough or they, you know, you get a little lucky and they don't fall all the way through. That's just one of the downsides about Swiss tracks. It's not convenient if you drop something, but I will say on the other hand, what's nice is if you know approximately you dropped it, it's not gonna bounce. Like on concrete, it could bounce and then you don't really know where it goes with Swiss tracks. If it does lock it in, at least it doesn't move. So that is one uh, benefit, even though it can get stuck um, in the Swiss tracks, which could be annoying, but man, it's like, it's give and take. So with any floor, you have to consider is it that much of a concern? Am I dropping bolts left and right? I mean, how many bolts do you really drop? If anything, I'm freaking dropping them in the engine bays more than the floor. So uh, that's just the, with my luck. But anyways, yeah, so the dropping of stuff or liquids is the same. If you spill oil, you can literally pop up a tile, which I'll show you in one second, clean it and then put it back. Yes, it's more work, but that is one of the sacrifices you make by having a floor that looks like this. All right, so let's reenact someone asking if you spill something, the world's gonna end. Oh my God, I've spilled all this water and now I have to pop up the floor. My life is going to just be horrible now. Let me show you, it's pretty easy, it's pretty easy. Let me show you. Grab a pick or whatever, some similar tool. Find the side that can come up, okay? Find the side. It's just coming up. I literally, this is the first time filming this, by the way. I didn't prep. I'm not ready. Boom. There we go. Out. Clean your little mess up there, Billy. Nice and clean. And then, let's put this back. Actually, I'm doing this raw. So, I'm not saying you should do this exact thing, but for me, it's this is what I do. Boom, click it in, we're good to go, Johnny. You're gonna get all the weird foot people coming, commenting. All right, if you can't tell, yeah, you can walk on the floor. Um, I will say, I, I don't walk here in barefoot normally, but with socks, you can do it. It's really not a big deal. With shoes, it's literally like the same. So, I don't know why everyone's so like obsessed who walks in the garage with feet or socks like that? I actually walk in the garage with socks a lot, but like in general, like you're not normally working on stuff without shoes. So I don't know why it's a concern, but even if it is, it's fine. It's literally the same. I wouldn't get the flat one over this because of that. I think the bigger channels are nicer for the dirt and that's one of the biggest benefits of this stuff. Um, so yeah, walking, Barefoot or with socks, not a concern, although I wouldn't want to stand here for extended periods of time, but generally that's probably not something you're doing anyway. So anyways, that's hopefully that solves that question. All right, now this is something that you'll have to adjust your habits. Jack stand, sharp edges, um, not the best idea to put this directly on the Swiss tracks. Yes, it can dent it. Yes, it can push it in a little bit or a lot depending on uh, what you're doing. So definitely recommend. I know a lot of guys have a thin rubber mat, like a, just a 3 8 or just really thin. They put it underneath the jack stand or the regular jack. Um, yes, it's extra work, but what in life is easy and worth it? There's very few things. So I think that's a small sacrifice. Are you putting your car on jacks enough to justify not having Swiss tracks, right? Is it that much of a pain to uh, not have Swiss tracks? So I think there's more pluses and any sort of adjustments or things you have to do differently. It's just like anything else. You get a manual car. Well, it's awesome and it's fun on the weekend, but shoot, if you get stuck in traffic, that sucks. Should you not buy a manual car? No, because you're not a baby and you can deal with the cons of a few days a week commuting like a man. So that's the same thing with Swiss tracks, same thing with literally anything in life. You push through and you make the sacrifice to get the thing you want and the thing that you think makes sense. So anyways, that's my take. I am a little bit fired up because more than anything, I feel like people are either misinformed or just not informed. They don't understand this is a 
almost like foreign concept to them that they've never seen. So with that said guys, I'm going to end the video. Um, Swiss Tracks, awesome, two thumbs up. Thank you to Matt at Obsessed Garage. Thank you to Swiss Tracks, all the guys and uh, gals involved in the product and the process and the information. I'm more than happy to do more videos. Hopefully this wasn't too much to absorb or too annoying. Um, but I just think I'm happy to spread more information on sort of my take. This is uh, not perfect for everyone, as I mentioned. You know, kneeling down is not ideal, but I feel like the few sacrifices, the jacks or jack stands or whatever, um, it's just an adjustment for a benefit in the other end. So it's up to you. Um, actually, the one last thing that I forgot to mention that I think no one usually mentions is that you can take it with you. So I'm not gonna be in this house forever. If I spend all this money on Swiss tracks, it's a lot. But as soon as I move one time, it's no longer a sunk cost. And I would really uh, assume I'm not gonna leave this in the garage. So sell the house, take it up so people don't see it, right? Uh, that would be the plan. So anyways, you can take it with you. If you do epoxy, you're locked in to that house and that cost and it's a sunk cost. So I think that assuming you're gonna move at all ever, that's another thing to consider that you don't have to pay for twice. I went with Swiss Tracks rib tracks, uh, black border, and the pearl gray. A lot of people have slate gray. I went with pearl, which is one color lighter. They also have pearl silver, which I was actually, I almost did, I actually had it in my shopping cart. Uh, but the pearl silver is too light. I was worried. Uh, I've seen a lot of them that I really liked and uh, I figured sort of a sacrifice, right? Potential dirt or tire marks or something, right? For the look, that, uh, that laboratory look, that sterile look. Well, I guess my garage isn't too sterile, but uh, the black and gray and white look. So I like that, besides the red cars. When you walk in, it probably looks you know, well thought out. I like to think I thought it well, but I don't, I don't know what I'm saying, I'm rambling. But anyways, that's it on the Swiss tracks. Links below, links to Obsessed Garage, links to um, a lot of the other stuff I use as well. Um, anyways, that's it. Thank you again. See you next time.